Hi y'all, welcome to my shop. Today we're going to turn a small bowl from an Australian brick. Well, not really, but we're going to turn a, uh, turn a small bowl from a scrap of this Mallee Burl from an Australian eucalyptus tree, and it's just as hard as a brick. I've never turned, turned a bowl out of wood this hard, so I learned a few things. You can see more details on, on the efforts I went through to salvage that that little blank I'm, I'm turning in this uh, project from this, this link above. So here's this Mallee, I think it's white Mallee burl from Australia. Uh, I use a screw chuck because I, I think that's a fast and easy way to do it. And I've got this collar on it that uh, Richard Raffin shows how to make. And very handy. But this stuff is so hard that hard for the standard size screw hole to this thing to screw in. Good thing I put some paraffin on it or I'd never make it. And I might not make it anyway. Boy, this, this one would have been a hard one to spin on under power if I'd been brave enough to do it. <laughs> I'm going to take a cue from Richard Raffin and try something I haven't done really done before and that's work on the outside of a bowl with a uh, large spindle gouge. This is a recently acquired 5 8 inch Doug Thompson, a little larger than typical. I just put a handle on it the other day, so this will be its maiden voyage actually turning something. Here it clears. Just round, round up that corner. Dusty blank. shape so I'm going to struggle a little bit to put a tenon on it without wasting too much wood. Um, I think I'm going to look at making, it's going to be a thin shallow bowl so I think I may look at using a larger larger recess with larger chuck jaws so I think I can do that without sacrificing the shape too badly here. If it comes out a ways, so let's give that a try. Look at my power grip jaws out to here. Yeah, I think I can get a bite on jaws that you know, and have an air gap that's probably not going to make any difference because the jaws are going to be so big. So let's let's try that. just a little bit more.
some other choices to make a smaller. I'm still got to take this down some. That still may not be a bad idea. Okay. Meanwhile, I'm going to round over the edge a little bit now. Before I finish the tenon. things I'm pleasantly surprised at using the uh, spent large spindle gouge on is I can get in there and make that tenon that that be difficult for me to do with the bowl gouge and get a nice clean clean shoulder so I'm pleased with that spot needs a little more work. Alright, the bur burls begin to show up a little bit in the figure that I wasn't always able to see in the blank, so that's good. I was afraid it wouldn't have much figure. profile I was thinking I'd round this over and make a make a uh, recessed somewhat in clo uh, closing in rim closed rim a little bit but now I'm beginning to think maybe not I have to reduce the size of the bowl by bring this in but I think I may I'll bring this in a little bit. I think I'll put a bead on the lip.
just a little bit of flat area there. And I'm going to hit them around over that bead. showing up. I've got a few regular spots. I think I'm going to uh, use a shear scraper that I recently showed you in a video. Okay, that hard burl, that, uh, I'm going to leave that tiny little flat spot there as being kind of inconsequential instead of making this thing even smaller than it is. I, I want to tighten up that bead. It, it, it's too soft going in there, so I think I'm going to come in there with a, with a point tool and kind of crisp it up a little bit. I could probably do that with this scraper. I think I'll give it a try. Raise it up a little bit and just come down into the corner. Okay, I sanded it off camera. Now we're going to go ahead and take it off and re this woodworm screw. And <clears throat> tell you what, these things are a challenge sometimes to get loose. Here's one trick that sometimes helps. Sometimes it helps just to break the friction just a little bit by just loosening this thing just a tiny little bit. And sometimes the contact is enough to <clears throat> get loose. But Unfortunately, let's see, Chuck is coming undone as I'm doing this. <sighs> well, here's a trick sometimes I use. You wedge in the, the chuck against the uh, tool rest. That way the chuck won't come screwed, won't come off. This is a struggle. Here we go. Here we go. Alright. I had to put some paraffin on it. I hate to think how hard it'd been to get off. Screw chuck's a great way. Woodworm screw. Woodworm screw is a great way to hold a small blank on there. Okay. Alright. Take out the woodworm screw. Pretend it's so. Nice to have choices. One goes in there without any problem. Hold it in the middle to center it. Tighten it up. And there we go. Okay. Now let's hollow this thing out. I'm going to move over to the center of the tool rest instead of getting out here. That way, by doing that, if you get out here, you get some leverage and you can possibly move the tool rest, but if you over the post here, you're not going to have those problems. Alright, I've already got a hole drilled in it for that screw, woodworm screw, but I could probably go ahead and go a little further. Let's see how much room. Nope, that's close enough. When I get to the bottom, I just have to be careful. I 
I've got another quarter inch or so once I get to the bottom. And that's just about right. Okay. Tighten, tighten. Locks off. Face shield is on. texture on it is so hard. Uh, I think I'll just uh, make a smaller rim and undercut it just a little bit. So, let's work on that rim a little bit. Consider that I'm going to make that uh, tenon just a tiny little foot, so I've got to go down another quarter of an inch or so. I just got a feeling that 
after I use a bowl scraper, it'll just really smooth it out. So let's give that a shot. I'm going to use a conventional bowl scraper. I had this a negative rate, and then after watching all of Richard uh, Raffin's videos, I decided to come back and change one of them back to a conventional scraper. So let's give that a shot. Alright, this rim's still a little bit rough, kind of completely flat. I'm going to bring this shear scraper up and see if I can clean it up a little bit. Just a tiny little bead right there. So let's come down here with this point tool.
got rid of that little tear out and I've got a nice inset there. Feels good. Now I've just got to smooth that transition right there. I think I'll do that by bringing this up. Get off the tool rest a little bit. Come up like this and we'll rotate into it. reversing okay I'm going to sand the inside uh, for you new new turners and not familiar where the best place to get uh, sanding supplies I would say uh, wood turners wonders I'm an affiliate uh, marketer so the link is in the show notes and if you buy some I get a small commission but I, I love all their sanding products I like their their uh, sanding system with the easy roll lock and and I like their angle grinder my vacuum check to reverse the bowl and clean up the, the base. I hope you found this video useful. If you like it, please uh, hit the like button to make it easier for other wood turners to find my, my channel. I've got a link here to a, a full playlist on bowl turning if you want to watch some other videos on bowl turning. I welcome your questions and comments, so leave them below. And remember, y'all stay safe. Come on back here.